Welcome to God's Grand Story, Session 2. The book of Genesis ends with Joseph and his entire family now safe and secure in the land of Egypt. But now 400 years have passed and the family has now become a nation, the people of God. There's a new Pharaoh in charge now who the Bible says knew not Joseph. So he began to put the Israelites into slavery to build the massive pyramids and the cities of Egypt. That's what pagan kings do. They try to make their gods big so everyone else looks small. That is so opposite from Jesus in the New Testament who humbled himself and took upon himself the position of a slave. Well, the oppressed people began to cry out to God to give us a deliverer, and God raised up a man named Moses. He had been educated in the finest schools of Egypt. You could break down his 120-year life, something like this. 40 years majestic, 40 years miserable, because he murdered a man, ran for his life, and 40 years miraculous. Moses had a liability of his own ability, but God worked with him over many years until his simple shepherd's staff became known as the rod of God. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Pharaoh would harden his heart and say, no, I won't let my free labor force leave to worship a God I don't even believe in myself. And then God changed his mind. He sent 10 plagues, each of them a symbol against one of the many gods of Egypt. Frogs, darkness, water turning to blood, flies. The last plague was the death of the firstborn son in each house in Egypt, not covered by the blood of the lamb. And as the Lord passed over them, that's called Passover. And finally, Pharaoh said, go. After quickly packing, they leave, heading toward the Red Sea. After a change of heart, Pharaoh and his armies, they begin to pursue the Israelites. And it would appear to be a certain slaughter. But God, in his perfect timing, parts the Red Sea while Moses' arms and staff are held high. That is a miraculous deliverance for sure. It would be remembered throughout the history of God's chosen people. As the waters rescind, the Egyptian army totally is drowned in a watery grave. A question I have for you is this. How have you seen the perfect timing of God in your own life? Times when it seems slow, maybe followed by God being right on time when needed. That's what happened to the children of Israel. After crossing the Red Sea, Moses, his sister Miriam, and all of the Israelites sing to the Lord in Exodus 15. And this is the first song recorded in the Bible. It says this, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Now, when I read that, that seemed a little bit strange to me. When you're packing quickly to go on a long journey, never returning to Egypt, do you really have room to pack the tambourines? The answer is yes, because for them, they used them in worship, and worship was a huge priority. Well, the people finally stop at Mount Sinai, where God is going to teach this people about His holiness by giving them the law. That's the Ten Commandments. That would reveal the nature of God to man and to regulate man's approach unto God. They were also given the blueprints, the plans to build the tabernacle. That was the portable house of worship made for the journey to the promised land. Now, serving in this tabernacle were several folks. They were called Levites and priests who taught the people about how the five offerings to God should be handled. God wanted his people to approach him in the seven feasts so God's people could congregate together in fellowship and celebration. After about one year at Mount Sinai, it was time to travel. So Moses counts the people, and he begins what should have been simply an 11-day journey. At an oasis called Kadesh, they send out 12 spies to check out the new land. After 40 days, they return, and they have good news, and they have bad news. The land is awesome, but there are giants in the land. All the people groups ending in ITE, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hittites, the people become, begin to murmur and they become afraid, which quickly becomes unbelief that they could really take this new land. So God will have them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until that whole generation died off. They finally stop on the eastern side of the Dead Sea in Moab. Moses preaches three sermons and then he dies. 
He reminded them of God's faithfulness, gives the Ten Commandments again because it's a new generation. That's called the second law, and then he dies. Now, why didn't he get to go into the promised land? The Bible says it's because he struck the rock in the wilderness the second time when he was told to simply speak to the rock so now that the water could flow. It's not until later in the New Testament we learn this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 where it says, They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Jesus was smitten on the cross once for our sins. Now we freely speak to him. You know, leaders don't always last forever. And thank God there's always a new generation just over the horizon coming on the scene to carry on the kingdom of God. A question I have for you is this. How do you handle the wilderness times of your life? When it seems nothing seems to change year after year, do you press on by faith or do you give up because of your feelings? You know, recently I was in the Judean wilderness with a study group and I was in the desert for five days and I found out there were several things that were true. I got very thirsty, I got very hot, and I got very tired. I had people to encourage me along my way and I made it to the top of some mountains we climbed and some rough hikes that we went on during that time in our life. And it reminded me that we're all in a wilderness time in our life from time to time. We're not always in the promised land. So a question I have for you and I'd like for you to discuss with people in your group today is this. Have you gone through any wilderness experiences yourself and how did you do so? Or do you know someone that also has gone through a wilderness and came out of it stronger by faith? Discuss that with your people and we'll see you in the next session.